Hello, my name is Tyler. I'm with Ideal Air. I'm here to talk to you about the new Ideal Air mini split system and how to properly install this unit. This is a unit package. This is how it's going to arrive to your location. We're going to cut the straps, set the unit down on the ground, upside down. The reason you cut it from the bottom is, as you can see, there's an extra layer of cardboard so you don't cut or scratch the unit. I'm going to remove the end caps. We want to remove the tape off the louvers. You'll see here on the back side, this is a stainless steel flexible line set. Inside the unit, you'll find your instruction manual, remote control, and batteries. You also have a pigtail for the auxiliary optional thermostat. If you look behind the line set here, you're going to see that the wall bracket that's required to mount the unit to the wall is actually installed on the unit. You're just going to grab a hold of it. You're going to place the wall bracket like so. It's very important that you make sure the unit is level when installed. Then you're going to drill a three and one quarter inch hole through your wall to the outside. The unit comes with a sleeve that's going to go inside the wall. This would be your drain kit. This goes to the inside of the wall and this mounts to the outside. Now we're going to go over the outdoor section. And all you need to do is pull up on the box. If you want this unit to sit up off the ground, this kit is included. We have mounting hardware and rubber feet for below the unit. We also have mounting hardware for concrete. You're going to mount the plate like so on the wall, an outside wall. You're going to line up the three holes. All the hardware is included. You mount this two pieces. You line up the feet and you can mount the unit up off of the ground on the outside wall. If you're not going to mount the unit up on the wall, you need to make sure that the ground below it is level but it has to be on a hard surface and it has to be level. Now I'm going to show you the steps to actually connect the two pieces of equipment together. Here I've got a unit that's actually set up. This will be mounted on the inside wall. The outdoor section will be mounted outside. The line set and the drain will be ran through the hole in the wall. On the line set, you've got two connections. You've got a large line and a small line. This is your suction. This is your high pressure line. You'll notice this tag. And you'll notice this tag is on here twice. It is very important that when you hook up these line sets, that you open these valves. These are your service valves. If you do not open those, and we're going to go over that in a minute, you will destroy the compressor and void the warranty on the unit. That's why we have two tags. Make sure you read these tags. All right, so once you've got the unit up, we're going to go ahead and remove the caps. Now, these are to ensure that the ends remain clean. It is very important that you visually inspect, make sure that green o-ring is in place and isn't damaged and there's no debris here. Good, I've got clean connections. Now we're going to remove the caps on the outdoor section. Again, you want to inspect, make sure there's no dirt, any debris, anything inside of these connections. We're going to go ahead, make the connection. Always start this with your fingers. You don't want to start it with a wrench because you don't want to cross thread. Okay, once you've got the line started, we're going to finish with the wrench. Okay, once it's tight, now we're going to connect the second line. When you're making these connections, it's normal sometimes to have a little small spurt of refrigerant. Once these connections are made and tightened down, you want to use a bubble spray you can use just soapy water. You're going to spray all around the connections. 
and the bottom. Now we're going to open the valves. We're going to remove the service valve caps. Now we're going to use a five millimeter Allen wrench to open the valves. You open the small line first. Continue to open the valve until you feel resistance. Now we're going to open the second line, the suction side. You're going to hear the refrigerant release. It's going to sound like a swoosh. There we go. And stop. Now, it's important to put these caps back on to prevent any refrigerant leaks. You want to do a visual inspection for any signs of leakage. That's the purpose of the bubble spray. We can go ahead and spray it again. This is a very important step in ensuring that your unit continues to work for you for years to come. Even the tiniest little leak over time eventually will reduce the performance and make your unit stop operating. Now we're going to go to the next step connecting the electrical. You need a number two Phillips screwdriver. We're going to remove the electrical connection cover. The unit is going to come with this pigtail installed if it's 24,000 or 36,000 BTUs. As you can see, there's no plug end. Those will be connected inside the electrical box that is installed by the licensed electrician. If you get a 12,000 BTU unit, it will come with a standard 115 volt plug end. I've removed this pigtail because I'm going to use an actual plug connection. We're going to match the colors here. As you can see, we've got black, white, and ground. And this is a 240 volt connection on this unit. You're going to see here you have a cable holder. Remove the screw, pull the cover out. So now we have the power wire. Again, if it's a 24,000 or a 36,000 BTU, it's a 240 volt circuit. As you can see here, I have a 240 volt plug. Now we're going to connect the wires from the indoor section. So we're going to connect those all to the associated positions. Okay, very simple. I'm going to put our wire retainer. That's going to maintain those connections so that the wires don't get pulled out. On the new units, we have a little display board. These LEDs are going to light up in a second when I energize the unit. Inside the owner's manual, you have a troubleshooting guide, and it's going to tell you what each LED means. You also have the indoor display board, which has error codes. I'm now going to connect 240 volts to the unit. The LEDs are now lit. With all the LEDs on, this is the power on in standby. So now you can see we have the power on to the unit. This is your drain line. It is very important that this is constantly kept at a downward slope. You want to make sure this is on the bottom side of the hole so there's no rise, so you don't have an issue with drainage. In the kit, there's going to be an adapter drain. I'm going to make the connection here run this drain outside and you can either collect that water or you can run it out into uh, the ground. Make sure it doesn't cause a slipping hazard. Here's the 15 sear remote. As you can see it slides down all your different features. So we're going to turn the unit on. So as you can see the unit's on. It's in the cooling position. That shows you a little snowflake. Here's your room temperature that you want to reach in Fahrenheit. You've got your fan setting, that is the auto setting. You've got a clock which you can set on the remote. Very simple and easy to use. Next we're going to talk about the optional auxiliary thermostat. The unit's going to come with this pigtail. You can attach that to the optional Lux Pro thermostat that's offered by Ideal Air. Here you can see the connections are very easy. Red wire goes to the R terminal, your yellow wire to the Y terminal, your white wire 
to the W terminal, your black to the O. Now we're going to install the thermostat on the indoor section. You'll see this pigtail hanging down. Make your connection and now you can use your optional thermostat. We're going to go ahead, put the unit into cooling mode. We're going to turn the temperature down. The unit has a built-in delay to protect the compressor. So typically it can take up to five minutes before the unit will actually activate. So we've got the unit in run, we've got the temperature turned down. As you can see, the louvers are now active. If you look in the display, you'll see the lights going from green, orange to green. It shows run and it shows a little icicle. That means the unit is operating, the fans on, the outdoor section should be running and we should start cooling. When the unit is active and the thermostat, the optional thermostat is running the equipment, your remote is going to be overridden. So you can't make any changes. You have to turn the thermostat off before it allow you to use the remote. Okay, now we're going to go over some maintenance items on the unit. Inside the indoor section, you have a filter and this needs to be checked on a regular basis. To access it, you're going to simply pop the lid open. These filters simply slide out, very easy to use. These are washable and reusable. Simply use a household cleaner to remove any grease or debris with some water. Let the filters dry. Then we're going to install the filter back into the unit. There's little grooves that it slides up into. Clip it into place ready to go. You have two filters. So now we can remove the second filter. You install the second filter. You're ready to go. Now we can close the cover. That's it. Very simple to do, but very important that you check those on a regular basis. On our outdoor section, it's very important that this is clean. A lot of areas you get dust, debris, uh, pollen, things of that nature. If this starts to get blocked up, again, it's going to reduce the performance of your unit. This is very simple. You can clean it with simple green and just a garden hose. But it's important that you make sure that this is clean and not damaged.